Welcome to Spanish Fork, Utah. Today's game, getting ready to bring you the game between the Union Cougars and the Carbon Dinos. Here are the semifinal playoff game here in 3A action. Uh, we, we're coming to you a little bit late because of rain delay, lightning delay, and a few other things going on. But we're just getting ready to start this, this uh, softball game. Uh, again, semifinal action. And uh, both teams come in highly ranked and highly regarded. Union comes in as the number two team out of num uh, Region 14. Carbon comes in as the number three team out of Region 14, meeting up here in the semifinals. Both great teams, quality teams. They played a couple of times this year. Union has gotten the better of them a couple of times in those games, but we'll see what happens here. Again, we bring you this game courtesy of Centricom, Channel 10, Local10.tv. If you'd like to see it, Internet streaming, uh, the TV coverage, again, Centricom, Channel 10. They have some sponsors here we'd like to mention, too. Bronze sponsors, Beaver Valley Hospital. Also silver sponsors, Carl's Jr., Centricom Channel 10, Beaver Medical Clinic, Nephi Federal Credit Union, Central Valley Medical Center, Azamite, Jones and DeMille Engineering. And remember, too, if you'd like some great entertainment, Juab County is part of their fair, presents Restless Heart. Get your tickets now. Gold sponsors, Intermountain Power Service Corporation, and also National Vinyl Products. So here we are, ready to go. And, of course, Union High School will be up to bat first. And uh, Carbon, of course, will be the home team in this situation. Bring in Union. Thank you for your attendance at today's game. Make sure I've got that correctly. and respect for the officials, coaches, and the players. Do Rowdy right. Cheer for your team and not against the opponent. Doing some mandatory pregame announcements and things about sportsmanship. Game. Again, two quality teams and, and looking hard to looking to get into the uh, now, championship fight of the undefeated one. final it's undefeated. The Bulldogs versus the Enterprise Wolves. On diamond number two, it's the Heber Beavers versus the Parowan Rams. On diamond number three, it's the Manti Templars versus the Grantsville Cowboys. And here on diamond number four, it's the Carbon Dinos versus the Union Cougars. Tomorrow's championship day begins with 2A and 3A semifinal games. Defensively for Carbon High School, the pitching will be Caitlin Cripps. Catching is number eight, Lindsey Madrigal. First base, number 13, game. Dakota Crusar. And playing second base, the number one, Kelsey on Sorensen. Playing shortstop, two. number seven, the McKenna Pendergrass. Number three. Playing and left two field, two number 24, two Kennedy two Nelson. Two and we'll get back to the others in just a moment as we're ready now for action. First pitch coming from Carbon 2 Union High School. First call is a strike in the inside corner. Strike one. Batting first for Union High School is Marley Horrocks, uh, playing center field, wearing number seven, the leadoff hitter for Union High School. One strike to count on her. This time she hits a high pop fly down the right field line. It will be fouled just across the fence and out of bounds. Strike two against Hor for Horrocks as yeah, she comes up. Two quick pitches by the pitcher Cripps for Carbon and two strikes on Horrocks. Looking for signs now and trying to get the ball back in, looking for signs from down the line. She's even confused. She thought the first one was a ball, so she's trying to make sure is it really two strikes or not and was confirmed by the umpire. Yes, it is two strikes, so she'll step back in now with an 0-2 count and coming up for another pitch, another opportunity to put the ball in play and get something started here for the Union Cougars. Down between third and short. Nice diving catch by the shortstop. Up with a great throw, but not in time. That's a great stop by the shortstop for Carbon High School. Playing that as McKenna Pendergrass once again. Just not able to get anything on the throw across the diamond to get her out. So you've got your first hit. We'll mark that as an infield single. As she hit that one in the gap and was able to get to that again. Great play by the shortstop for Carbon. Into bat now, stepping in there and left-handed is Delcy Lamb for Union High School, second baseman wearing number three. Uh, and she'll step in, the first pitch is a called ball uh, to Lamb, looking for the second. 
way outside once again. They're trying to sneak a second baseman in behind it. She's faking the bunt, and uh, they're throwing outside, trying to get something going there. The corners are rolling up, and they're trying to sneak the second baseman in behind the runner and maybe pick her off at first. So far, nothing good has happened. Now the catcher will set up a little bit more inside. Looking for the pitch. It's on the outside corner, waved at by the batter. Again, Delcy Lamb tried to dump it down the third baseline just off of that a little bit, so it'll be a two and one count now. Two balls, one strike now to Delcy Lamb. Again, on first base is Marley Horrocks, who got the infield single. This time, a little slap to the outside, but it's going to go out of bounds. In fact, it'll hit the screen, so it'll go even the count now at two and two. And nobody out here in the top of the first inning here, just getting going here, if you're just joining in the game between Carbon and Union. Once again, two and two the count. Pitch on the way. A little bit high. They're going to let that one go. And she lets it go. That'll run the count full. So at full count, we'll run her up first base. Nobody out. Again, pitching, doing a nice job for Carbon. Uh, Caitlin Cripps, number five, brings the pitch on the outside. Again, slapped by Lamb, but it'll go just fouled on the third baseline. She's trying to slap that over the head of the third baseman, who is drawn up uh, in that third base bag. Now she's going to step back just a little bit. Delcy Lamb will step back in. Now, again, the count, full count. Nobody out here in the top of the first, and no score yet. Pitcher to the plate. Again, they're standing on that outside corner. They're going to call that one ball four. So Delcy Lamb works the count until she finally gets the ball, base on balls, and that'll move uh, Marley Horrocks to second base. So runners at first and second, nobody out here as his uh, union comes ready to go, and they, they got something going here in the first. Coming to the plate will be the shortstop, number 16, Mason Nielsen, and she'll be the number three batter stepping in there now. She squares to bunt. Going to put the ball down. Nice bunt down the third base line, up with the and a throw out to first base. Nicely done, nice bunt by Mason Nielsen. And she's thrown out across the field from Callie Fawcett across to Dakota Crusar for the first out. And that will be scored as a 5-3 out, put out and uh, one away. Now the runners have moved over to second and third now. And uh, that was the object of her bunt, bringing up the, the, the clean, cleanup hitter, the number four hitter. And she rips one into left field. Is it going to get down? It does get down. And that'll bring one run across. They will hold the other runner and miss the cutoff, but everybody will stay home. So Madison Havlock, we didn't even get a chance to announce her, the third baseman, the cleanup hitter. She's going to get a single in the left field, and that will score Horrocks from third base. So one to nothing already for the Union Cougars as uh, they've struck here in the first inning. They'll still only have one out, and on the hit, Delcy Lamb is able to move to third base. So one away now. you got Hadlock at first and, and uh, Lamb at third, and in the batter's box is Bostic. Now Mallory Bostic, a little bit high and outside is the pitch. Ball one to her. Now the runners are first and third. There's all sorts of things that can happen here, and uh, Bostic, again, Bostic, excuse me, the catcher wearing number 13. She'll step back in the box. Ball's going to be fouled off over the right first base. Like the fact, it goes clear over into the other the other dugout, the other field, uh, playing uh, the two-way playing over on the other field, and they're going to get an extra ball over there. So it's one on one the count now. She'll step back in and uh, waiting for the uh, offering from Caitlin Cripps again. Turns to bunt, puts the ball down the first base line. They got a runner coming from home, and she makes it home. First baseman feels it, not sure what to do with it. Turned to first, but the play was at home. And as she turns to first, the run scores, and there was nobody covering at first. And so, again, that's, a, that's an infield hit. We'll call it an infield hit by Bostic. And uh, that's going to move Hadlock to second base, and it will score from third. Delcy Lamb, great bunt there. Great bunt by Mallory Bostic. Now, Carbon's going to call a bit of a timeout and get together over there at first base so they know who's doing what and who's covering what and having a little bit of a little bit of a discussion, which is good at this point in time, taking some leadership and getting some things squared away. Coming to the plate will be number 10, the right fielder, Chloe Heider. Chloe Heider will come up and she bats left, number 10. And usually those left-handers like that slap, slap routine, and she does line up in the back of the box. 
And that's typical of them as they'll step forward and run down the box as they try to slap that ball. She runs down, ball outside. Whoa, we're going to give him a called strike on the outside corner, says the official. And that'll be strike one against Hyder. Again, runners at first and second, one away, and two in so far in the inning. Hyder slides down the box, outside ball. Fake throw to second base. Just to kind of warn that runner at second base, which is Madison Hadlock, to get back quicker. So Hadlock and Bostic on, first and second base. And Hyder at the bat, two runs across. Runs down the box, nice changeup attempt. Hard throw back to the pitcher. But no, uh, I believe he called that a ball. I haven't seen the indication for strike, so it'll be a two and one count now to Chloe Hyder. On deck is Abby Earl. She's the designated player, number 11. And in the hole is Brindley Bartlett number two next pitch offering is outside and low ball three three and one now as the pitcher continues to struggle just a little bit Caitlin Cripps struggling just a little bit and uh, needing to play here from one of her teammates Hyder's in the box pitch on the way it's gonna be outside oh they're gonna give that a call strike so that'll run it full full count now to the batter Hyder and uh, she calls a timeout. She's lost some equipment, but Hyder will be have a full count now. Again, uh, Hyder, the right fielder for the Union Cougars. And uh, Cripps will step back up to that plate now, and Hyder in the box. Bringing the three and two count now. Again, one away. Pitch on the way. Way outside. They've got to call that one a ball. Ball four. That will load them up now. So Hyder works the count to full, then goes on base on balls. And that will advance the runners. And Nobody Hadlock will go player. to third. Number and uh, over to Abby second Earl. will go Bostic. So bases loaded. And at the plate now, Abby Earl, number 11. At the plate now with a chance to really make something happen here for the Union Cougars. First pitch is popped up foul, hits the backstop and down. And we'd like to uh, also mention and then wish uh, Abby's mother, Angie Earl, uh, the best wishes uh, as she battles her situation in the hospital right now and not able to be here today. We've heard quite a quite a riveting story about Abby, a Angie's Angels and the blue ribbons that the Union Cougar girls are wearing. We wish her well. Second pitch to Earl is going to be high and outside. Ball one, one and one. One and one with one out. Two o'clock, two across already in the inning and bases loaded here for Earl as she bats here in the first. This pitch is gonna be up in the air, probably an infield fly call, that's what it will be. Infield fly, fly with less than two out automatic. So that will be the second out as she flies out to the pitcher, number one, that will be the second out of the inning. So now, Brindy Bartlett comes to the plate. She is the starting left fielder for the Union Cougars, wearing number two. And she'll step up to the plate now with a chance again. With two away now, runners will be going hard, anything hit. Pitch from Cripps, going to be a little bit low. P throw down to first base quickly, but nothing there. Nothing there. That will be one ball to the batter. Once again, Bartlett at the plate. This is the eighth batter in the inning. Pitch is going to be inside and low. Runner's coming from third. She got a late break, but the bobbles the, pit, the ball back to the pitcher. She had time to make the play at the runner home because the runner broke late on the passed ball, but the throw back to the pitcher was mishandled, and so Hadlock then scores the run, and everybody else moves up. Bostic to third now, and the Chloe Hyder to second on the pass ball, Madison. Haddock scores in the Hadlock, and that's the third run for the Union Cougars here in top of the first. Once again, the pitch to the plate. Swing on, pop up again to the pitcher, and that'll be three outs as Brindy Bartlett pop, will pop up to the pitcher one more time. That's the third out of the inning. So at the end of the top of the first inning, over with three runs across, nine, eight batters used in the inning, and Union Cougars goes to the bottom half of the second with a 3-0 lead, and we'll be right back. That, that position has changed several times. I'm Dr. Chris Karish, orthopedic surgeon with a subspecialty in sports medicine. 
Central Valley Medical Center has state-of-the-art operating rooms and the latest orthopedic equipment to provide me with the tools to perform safe and minimally invasive procedures. I've had the opportunity to treat athletes from my own sons to the NFL. I provide a wide variety of treatments to get you back on your feet and enjoying your life. Come see us here at Central Valley Medical Center where we can treat you as a friend and not a medical record number. Welcome back once again here to Spanish Fork Complex. We go to the bottom of the first inning now with the Carbon Dinos coming to bat. Playing defensively for Union. Pitching today will be Ali Rook. Rook, number six, playing second. Short uh, catcher, excuse me, Mallory Bostic, number 13. Playing third, first base, Madison Hadlock. And number four, uh, playing third base, will be Tori Ross. Playing five and also wearing five. The shortstop today will be Mason Nielsen wearing number 16. Left field will be played by Brindy Bartlett wearing number two. Center field played by Marley Hor Horrocks and she's wearing number seven and then playing in right field Chloe Hyder. Also the uh, designated player Abby Earl wearing number 11. That's how they'll line up defensively for the Union Cougars coming first to the plate for Carbon Dinos uh, in the top, bottom of the first. Kelsey Sorensen, the second baseman. She squares to bunt, pulls it back now, and looks for that pitch off that outside corner. They're being liberal out there. I will say that here for both teams. They are being liberal on that outside corner. That's a called strike one. On deck will be Lindsey Madrigal, the uh, catcher for Carbon. Swing and a miss by Kelsey Sorensen, strike two. Pitching again for Union number six, Ali Rook, and throwing a nice ball there. It's 2 and 0, 0 and 2 the count now for Rook facing Kelsey Sorensen. Again, Madrigal on deck and Krusar in the hole. Wow, way outside. As she sat upside, outside late and got the pitch outside, but that was way out there, and uh, they better not get that call. So 1 and 2 the count now. To Sorensen. Again, if you're just joining us uh, in the top of the first, whoa! Watch that outside corner once again. Called strike three. So the first strike out of the ball game. Called strike three. Way out there on that outside corner. So Sorensen goes down. Again, as I was saying, if you're just joining us, Union struck big in the first inning as they got three runs across and uh, were able to take advantage of those. They did have two hits in the inning, so they got three runs on two hits. And there was one error, that pass ball, you call that maybe an error. And they left two on base, so. <coughs> First pitch now to Madrigal is fouled off straight back, hits the backstop and drops down. So that's the first pitch to Madrigal, Lindsey Madrigal. Again on deck is Dakota Trussar. Second pitch from Rook. Hit down the right field line, going to hit the backstop and drop down harmlessly again. 0-2 the count. And uh, Rook, you know, she, she goes to work. She doesn't waste a lot of time. She throws strikes and keeps them coming. And uh, so far hasn't wasted a lot of time. I think she's only thrown one ball thus far to the two hitters. Taking signs from the coach. Next pitch is a changeup. Hit softly to third base. Picked up there and across the diamond. Nicely played. And that goes from Fawcett across to Krasar. Excuse me, that goes wrong team from Ross across to Hadlock for the 5-3 out for the second out of the inning, and that brings up Krusar. Dakota Krusar comes up. She's the first baseman for the Dinos, and uh, Caitlin Cripps, the pitcher, will be on deck. First pitch foul straight back, strike one, as uh, Rook continues to throw hard strikes. She's got a nice changeup that she mixes in there, too, and some good motion on the ball. And she'll step back in there. Again, the coach is calling the signal. She takes it from the sidelines and then looks at the wristband to see what the coach has called. Brings it in. Pop up to the shallow right field. That looks like it's going to be down. In fact, it does. The right fielder overruns it. So around first base, headed to second. The batter, she's going to be down with a slide and in there for safe. The first hit of the game for Dakota Krusar. And... Uh, Nicely done, the right fielder tried to make that diving or a running catch, just not able to do it, got past her and the second baseman for the uh, Cougars 
Ross had to go all the way out and get it, and by the time they got it back in, standing at second with a double is Dakota, Dakota Crusar. So the Dinos now have something going. And coming to the plate, Caitlin Cripps, the pitcher there for Carbon. She'll step in with two down and a runner at second base now. And a chance to kind of get back into that lead of Union. She'll take the first swing. Swinging strike will go across both sides, both fields and onto the other field uh, where the other two-way game is going on currently. So strike one against Cripps. On deck is Pendergast. And in the hole is Callie Fawcett. Should uh, Cripps and Pendergrass get on. So 0-1 the count. Pitch outside. Ball, ball one. 1-1 one one is the count to Cripps. Again, these teams are region foes and have met a couple of times already this year, so they know each other very well. Kind of takes a little bit of time when they take that call from the sideline. Swing and a miss on the outside corner. Nice pitch. Took a little bit off of it, did Rook. Took a little off that pitch. A little bit of motion on that outside corner and fooled the batter, Cripps. So it'll be one and two now with two down. One ball, two strikes, two down, and a runner at second base in Kusar, who hit the double to right field. Big pitch here. And Rook will step out. Excuse me. Cripps will step out. Call timeout. That takes a long time. They take a long time getting that call from the coach on the sideline. And, uh, and then she has to check it on the wristband to see exactly which call he's made. So here we are set now. Pitch the plate. Hits hard down the right field line, but it's going to be out of bounds. Foul. As it does cross the fence and hit the sidewalk. But she put her lick on that ball. And uh, she'll get new life now. The count will remain one ball, two strikes. Here in the bottom of one. Again, the game's a little bit late getting started. We had rain. We had uh, lightning, the thunder, and, and then... In high school, every time they see or hear any lightning whatsoever, every time it happens, they restart a 30-minute 30, 30 clock. And they got down to a few seconds left and another lightning bolt hit, and they had to wait a, again another 30 minutes. So there was at least an hour delay uh, in the games, and they had to wait for some previous games that had been started to finish up. So we're significantly late here with this ball game, but it's nice weather now as the sun has broken back out, and it's a nice day for ball now. Pitch on that outside corner, going to be called a ball, so it'll go two and two now. Excuse me, the three and two possibly. And it'll be a full count with uh, two down. And the runner at second base. Rooks steps in, brings it, foul ball straight back. As Cripps is not going to go down easily, so it'll be a foul ball straight back to the screen. Picked up by the catcher, Bostic. It's a lot of work on those catchers, all that they have to do back there. Have to go hats off to the catchers and all the work that they do. So once again, we go three and two, two down. To the plate hard. It's going to be high, ball four. So Cripps doesn't get the hit, but she does work the count. She was down early and works it back and then gets the base on balls. So it'll be a force now. Runners at first and second, two down. And coming to the plate, Pendergrass. McKenna Pendergrass, number seven, playing shortstop. Had that great diving catch in the first inning. It was uh, a grounder, stopped it from going through the infield, but unable to get it out at first base. First pitch, they're going to call on that outside corner, strike one. And again, I will mention they are liberal on that outside corner. Most of the umpires that I've seen in this tournament have been liberal on that outside corner. Once again, they set up, pitch to the plate on the outside corner. Again, nice movement, late break there on the pitch from Rook and fooled Pendergrass completely as she whiffed at it, but it broke late. There was no way she could get to that ball. It started on the outside corner and broke farther out. So 0-2 now with two down and two on. Pitch once again, nice break on that outside corner. Once again, as she strikes her out, she takes a little bit off. So Pendergrass goes down swinging. It is a strikeout, and so they will strand two. We'll be back in just a moment. The Intermountain Power Service Corporation is proud to bring you this presentation. IPSC is a community-minded company that contributes to our local schools, community organizations, and economy. 
The Intermountain Power Project consistently ranks among the best of America's coal-based power plants in reliability, cost-effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. Intermountain Power Service Corporation strives for perfection and is honored to be actively involved with Delta Millard and Juab High Schools. Azomite Mineral Products in Nephi is using a unique deposit to create fertilizers and as a feed ingredient for customers all over the world. Their feed grit product used as a feed ingredient for livestock is gaining popularity because research has indicated its potential to improve overall animal health. Azomite can be found at your IFA country store, Steve Regan stores, or on their website at azomite.com. For more information, visit them on Facebook, Twitter, or the web. Azomite is excited to be part of the Nephi community and supports Juab High School Athletics. Welcome back once again to Spanish Fork Complex. And uh, compared to what we had a little while ago, what a beautiful day for ball, folks. Uh, sun has come out. It's not too hot, not too cold. Beautiful day. Uh, but that's not the way it looked a little while ago. But uh, that's a whole different uh, era and story. It's, it's springtime in Utah. I guess we can say that. So after one inning, we've got a 3-0 score now for the Union Cougars. And they'll come back to bat. They'll start with the number nine batter, Tori Ross, the third baseman, wearing number five. And she'll start it off. And she also will bat from that left-hand side. Then we'll go back to the top of the top of the order with Marley Horrocks and also Delcy Lamb in the hole uh, to start this second inning. Top of two, 3-0. In the bottom of the first, uh, there's the one hit, no errors, and two left on base for the Carbon Dinos as they scored in the zero runs. First pitch on that outside corner going to be called a ball, ball one. And again, like the other left-handers, Tori Ross steps up and gets in the back of that plate and then runs down the box with that slap technique, looking to slap that ball and try and put it on the ground with it and then get to first. Once again, runs up, pulls the ball back, bat back, however, because the ball is outside and low. So that's ball two, two and oh now on the batter, Ross, with, uh, again, Horrocks on deck. And Horrocks got a single, that, that infield single as the shortstop made a great play to stop it, but wasn't able to get the throw. Whoa, a nice uh, call on the outside corner. Two and one the count now. And uh, she'll step back in there. Run up the box. Slaps it to third. Going down the line. Third baseman up with it quick. Went directly to the third baseman, Fawcett. And she comes across the diamond to Crusar. So nicely done uh, across the diamond. That's 5-3 for the first out. And... Uh, We'll go back to the top of the order, Marley Horrocks. That slap is a great technique, but you got to get it to one side or the other of a player. Yeah, he, it's pretty tough if you hit it right at somebody, and the third baseman in that circumstance is played up tight, and that ball goes right to her. He needs to get that to the side somewhere, so she got a little extra time to get to first base. Top of the order is Marley Horrocks. She got a single in the first, and again, she hit it between second, shortstop and third. The shortstop made a great diving catch on it uh, to stop it from going into the outfield but was unable to get up and throw her out in time. So an infield hit for Horrocks, and she did score the first run later in that inning. First pitch to uh, Horrocks this time is a ball high and outside. Next pitch coming. Hit just over the second baseman's head. Is it going to get down? It's in between short right center field and right field. We'll get it right here in a minute. Beautiful hit in between. Perfectly placed, if, if that's what you want to say. If I'm not sure that they always intend to put it exactly where it goes, but in this case, it was perfectly placed. And that will be another single for Horrocks as she's two for two on the day. And that'll put her at first base. And Delcy Lamb, who got on base last time with a walk, again, the left-hander with the slap technique, was able to work a walk last inning. Steps in. Change up. She's going to slap it up in the air just over first baseman, but second range is over and takes it, so it's an F4 as she snuck over and got that ball, uh, Horrocks at first base was almost in no man's land, didn't know whether to take off or stay there. And she wasn't sure the ball was gonna be played. It's a tough spot for a runner to be in, but they were able to range over and get it. Second baseman, Kelsey Sorensen, doing a nice job there for Carbon. That'll bring to the plate Mesa Nielsen. And Mesa Nielsen uh, hit it the third last inning. And uh, a runner gonna go, and the throw is out into right center field. A bad throw by the catcher. And uh, going all the way to third is Marley Horrocks, so she gets a, a stolen base, but then on a terrible throw and nobody covering, goes clear out into center field and uh, will allow Horrocks to go to third base. And uh, that'll put her at third base in scoring position now. Officials having a bit of a discussion here. 
And uh, center fielder luckily was awake on that, was able to get up to that ball and make a throw, get the ball back in so that Horrocks could not go all the way to home. Delcy Lamb, excuse me, Mason Nielsen standing there. She did square to bunt last time and then pulled it back. This time she stays, reaches out and slaps it, gonna hit the screen, foul ball. It'll be 0-2 now, the count, I believe. Here on Mason Nelson. Again, she uh, hit it to third and got thrown out at first last time up in the first inning. And as she'll stand there with an 0-2 count now. Change up from the pitcher. She holds back and then finally <laughs> gets a piece of it, at least fights it off. But that was a nice change up and a great piece of hitting by Nelson as she held back, read the, the pitch, held back and then just got a piece of it enough to stay alive and get another chance here. Two outs in the inning. Pitch to the plate, right down the middle. Hit right back up the middle and that's the importance of the extra base that was picked up on the bad throw and that allows Hadlock, Horrocks, excuse me, to come back in for the second run for her. She's been on both times and scored both times. And uh, that, that ball is a hit straight up the middle by Mesa Nilsson. Beautiful hit up the middle. Now batting the first baseman, number four. Her first hit of the Madison game. Hadlock. Hadlock will come to the plate now. The first baseman, Madison Hadlock, the number four hitter for Union, with a runner at first, two away. Pitch is going to be high and outside. Ball one to Hadlock. Hadlock last time was able to reach on a, on a walk. And, uh, and was able to score eventually in the inning for the third run in the first inning. This time she's going to hit the ball high into right field. Right fielder coming in and does make the catch for the Carbon Dinos. The right fielder, Brooke Moosman, makes a nice catch out there to end the inning. And so they'll get one run again in the second inning. And we'll be back with the bottom of the second inning. The Beaver Medical Clinic has built a reputation of providing compassionate health care for residents of Beaver and Iron Counties. You'll appreciate the professional services of Drs. B. Noel Robinson, Roger Smith, Wade Oakton, Lance Smith, Physician's Assistants Reagan Fales, Travis Hicks, and Kenneth Hussey, and Nurse Practitioners Robin Horton, Lindsay Cheney, Rebecca Rasmussen, and Wade Hollingshead. The Beaver Medical Clinic offers affordable health care and convenient payment options with offices in Beaver, Milford, and Parowan. You ever look up at the stars and wonder? How do they pack all that taste into these charbroiled sliders that start for just a buck? Magic. Charbroiled sliders starting at just a buck. Only at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. If you got five bucks, you could get like 9.96 inches of sandwich. Woo! Or you can get a real meal with a charbroiled double cheeseburger, dog, fries, and a cookie. The $5 All-Star Meals only at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Welcome back once again to Spanish Fork. We're getting ready for the bottom of the second inning now. The as Carbon Dinos, Dinos come to bat, trailing four to nothing in the, in the game. At the bottom, top of the first, uh, again, Union gets one run on two hits with an error and one left on base. And they are up now 4-0 against the Carbon Dinos. Coming to bat first for the Carbon Dinos, the number six batter, wearing number nine, Callie Fawcett, the third baseman. Her first time up in the ball game, facing Allie Rook. First pitch is fouled back over the screen and into the other field. And uh, they're getting a lot of extra softballs over in that field, the way these girls are batting and, and pitching. That was fouled way back. Strike one against Fawcett. On deck is Clarissa Noyes, the uh, center fielder, and in the hole, Brooke Moosman. And she is wearing number 11 and uh, playing number nine, playing the right field position. Second pitch to the batter Fawcett is fouled back. It'll be strike two. Oh, and two the count now to Fawcett. This pitch is going to be hitting the right field. The right fielder is going back, back, back. Drops it off the edge of her glove. It's going to go past her. Going to second is the play, runner Fawcett. So she hit that one right to right field and just off the glove of the right fielder Chloe Heider for Union. And out of the out of that she's able to, Kylie Fawcett's able to get to second base. So a ball that you look back and think should have been caught just off the edge of her glove and out, of, out into the right field, allowing Callie Fawcett to go all the way to second base. Bringing to bat, Clarissa Noyes now, her first time at bat. She puts down a bunt, dead in front of the plate. Nice bunt 
They're going to get her at first base, it looks like. Throw back across the diamond, trying to pick off Fawcett at third. No good. And on the, uh, on the bunt attempt, and that was a beautiful bunt. He just killed it right in front of the plate. I thought she's going to get there. And uh, the catcher for Union makes a great play, Mallory Bostic, because she had to throw not only to first base, but she had to not be sure not to hit the runner. It was directly in front of her. So great play by her for the first out of the inning. And again, that brings to the plate number 11, Brooke Moosman. And uh, she gets a called strike on the first pitch. And the, on deck is Kennedy Nelson, the left fielder. And then we'll go back to the top of the order. In the hole is Kelsey Sorensen, if we get that far. Again, one down, runner at third now in the person of Callie Fawcett. Next pitch comes it's again on that outside corner, called strike two. So 0-2 now the count to Fawcett. Looking back in, the pitcher, Rook. Whoa, it hit the batter. She took one. Oh, the umpire's going to call her back and say she made no effort to get out of the way. Therefore, he's not going to give her the walk. I've seen player after player turn into a ball like that and take the hint. And uh, always <laughs> they kind of give him first base. The coach is kind of giving him some razzing on the side. The umpire keeps saying, that's enough. I've heard enough. She did take that right in the hip, upper thigh. And he's going to declare that she does not get the base on balls by hit by pitch. It, it will be a ball. So it'll be one ball, two strikes now against our four, Brooke Mooseman. Coach is standing with her. She's kind of trying to walk that off a little bit. Well, now they're bringing out a pad to put on that elbow. Said, Did she get hit in the elbow? I thought it was in the hip, but maybe she got hit in the elbow. And they're putting something on her elbow now. She was kind of limping around out there. I thought she was hit in the hip. They have put a brace on or a padding on the upper arm now. She'll step back in, though. Moosman will step back in. One ball, two strikes now is the count to the batter, Moosman. Rooks, the pitcher, did an excellent job. Call a strike three, swinging strike as they throw again on that outside corner. She's able to get a strikeout. That's the third strikeout of the game now for Rook as she's thrown a nice game. She's had three, two previous in the first inning, now a strikeout here. So for her third of the game, that'll bring to the plate Kennedy Nelson now, the left fielder for Carbon. And on deck will be Sorensen, the leadoff hitter, also the second baseman, if uh, Nelson's able to get on. We do have a runner at third. And so they are trying to stretch that runner. That runner is Callie Fawcett, again, who hit the uh, ball to right field, uh, the air on the right fielder, able to get to second, then got to third on the, on the sacrifice by Clarissa Noyes. First time at the plate for Nelson, again, is the number nine batter. Pitch is dribbled down to first base slowly. First baseman picks it up and goes to the base. That's Madison Hadlock, and that'll be a three unassisted if you're scoring at home, three U for the third out, and that'll end the inning as they get a hit, but they're unable to get the uh, runner on base, but unable to score as it's four to nothing now after the well, end of two. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming to the Juab County Fairgrounds this August is country group Restless Heart in Concert. Get tickets now at juabcountyfair.com. Get advanced tickets now for Restless Heart in Concert at the Juab County Fairgrounds at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, August 9th. Floor seating is just 30 bucks. Reserve seating, 20. Get your tickets now at juabcountyfair.com. Don't miss Restless Heart in Concert, August 9th in Nephi, Utah. Get tickets at juabcountyfair.com. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. Welcome back once again. Here we are in Spanish Fork, getting ready for the top now of the third inning. Union Cougars will be coming to bat. Uh, they will start with the number four hitter for Union, 
uh, also wearing number four, Madison Hadlock. And that's the first baseman for the Union Cougars. Last time up, Madison Hadlock was able to reach base and uh, was eventually able to score. Going all the way around and scoring was Hadlock for the third run of that first inning. I believe I've got that wrong. I believe Hadlock was the third out of the first inning. Excuse me. I, that's right. Mallory Bostic comes up now as Hadlock was the third out there. In the first inning, my mistake, I apologize for that. Mallory Bostic coming to the plate, and Mallory Bostic got a hit in the first inning, got reached eventually all the way around to third base, was unable to score, but did get a hit in the first inning. So she'll lead off here in the top of the third, will be Bostic, Mallory Bostic. Pitch for, comes to the plate, it's going to be low and inside, looks like to me, ball one will be the call. On deck will be Chloe Heider, and in the hole, Abby Earl. Uh, for the Union Cougars here as they go to bat here in the third inning. Ball's gonna be hit sharply up the center part of the field. She might get a chance to go to two on this as she rounds first, heading to second. They're having trouble fielding the ball out there. Had a trouble picking the ball back up. Beautiful ball up the middle by Mallory Bostic. That's a double as she hits it all the way to the fence and uh, got all the way to second base on that. Nice job by Mallory Bostic. She's two for two on the day, a single, and now a double for Bostic, and she stands there at second base with nobody out, and Chloe Heider coming to the plate. Again, she reached last time on a base on balls, and so we'll see what she can do here as Heider stands at second base. Bostic stands at second base. Squares and fakes the bunt, brings everybody close to the plate, but she does not go and bunt it called strike on the play. She'll step back in there, batting from the left-hand side is, is Chloe Heider. She looked to slap that ball, slaps it down, whoop, tries to go down first base, it's gonna go foul. And so she, it'll be an 0-2 count now to Heider. Again, Mallory Bostic standing at second base. They're trying to move her over to third and get her a chance to score the run. Heider at the plate. A little pitch is going to be high this time. Ball one and two now. The count one and two. As Heider battling in there from that left, she plays the right field position. And uh, again, reached last time on a base on balls. Pitch on the way. Ooh, swing and a miss. Tipped it, tipped it, but it is caught by the catcher. So that'll be a strikeout. First strikeout of the game now for the pitcher for Carbon, Ka Caitlin Cripps. That's her first strikeout. Foul tip directly to the glove of the catcher. Strikeout, bringing Abby Earl to the plate. Abby Earl flew out to the first of the, the pitcher last inning. And then Tori Ross will be on deck. Foul off the right-hand side. Down the line a little ways. Catcher runs over to pick it up. Mallory Bostic again standing at second base with that, with that double that she hit on in, the, in her at bat. On deck will be Brindley Bartlett, also flew out to the pitcher in the first inning. Oh, great play by the shortstop of Carbon Dinos. Another great play by McKenna Pendergrass, as that was a line shot, looked like it hit base, had base hit written all over it, and she lays out and makes a great catch on that play. McKenna Pendergrass, the play of the game thus far. It's the second out of the game. Pendergrass for out number two, brings to the plate. The right field, the left fielder number two, Brindy Bartlett. Brindy Bartlett will come to the plate now. Two down now. We still have Mallory Bostic standing at second base. And that play by Pendergrass just saved a run right there as that would have been into center field and would have been, an, been allowed Bostic to come around and score. And so that's a run saving great, great grab by Pendergrass. Pitch to the plate. Going to be hit over the head just into the center field. Picked up there, not, not didn't get to center field as Pendergrass runs over and grabs it. It'll be a base hit by Bartlett. Just over, just dropped right about second base, but didn't have enough steam to get into the outfield grass. And so that will hold the runner at first. It'll be a base hit for Bartlett and bring Tory Ross to the plate. Tory Ross hit it to third base last time and was thrown out at first as she slapped that ball down third base. Runners at first and third, two down. She takes the first swing. It's a pop up to second base and it'll be fielded there nicely by Kelsey Sorensen, the second baseman, to end the threat that Union had here in the third inning. 
So that'll be, we'll be back in just a moment with the start of the bottom half of the third inning. Just a moment. High speed Wi Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Centricom powers your Wi Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your internet today. Call or visit Centricom.com to learn more. The trail is calling. Every turn, hill, and fallen log is screaming your name. And you're ready because you have the right type of power and agility to answer the call. Introducing the Honda Pioneer 1000 with best-in-class 999cc engine and the industry's only six-speed fully automatic dual-clutch transmission. Check out the Honda Pioneer 1000 at Garrett Honda, 563 North Main in Nephi. Garrett Honda, our family is serving your family for over 50 years. Welcome back once again to Spanish Fork Complex. And we will go now to the bottom of the second, third inning, excuse me. And Carbon will go back to the top of the order now. They'll start back up with Kelsey Sorensen, the second baseman. And uh, she was struck out the first inning. And we'll see what she can do here again now in the third inning as she steps up the plate for her second at bat. Lindsey Madrigal will be on deck and uh, Dakota Crusar will be in the hole for the Dinos. First pitch, swing out, left field, ball down the line, it gets in, it's gonna be a fair ball around first base. Coming to second base, the throw is there in time and she's tagged out. She tries to go too far, nice job by the left fielder of the Union Cougars who filled the ball, Brindley Bartlett, and quickly got the ball back in. And Sorensen thinking she could stretch that into a double is, is thrown out at second base, standing up. That wasn't well, hardly even close to being eight. able to get there. Lindsay and she's Madrigal. thrown out at second base. So 7-4 will be the, the way you score that. Thrown out at second base, but a nice hit. All for naught. Swinging on the first pitch, swinging is Madison, Lindsay Madrigal. She's going to dribble it down third, but it'll be just foul. So strike one to Madrigal. Dakota Crusar will be on deck, and Caitlin Cripps will be in the hole for the, the Carbon Dinos as they are trying to get something going here. They've got hits here and there, but unable to make anything happen across the plate. And they, they again, they work at it. Lindsey Madrigal takes the ball there, 1-1 one -on -one the count, one down. Again, a great hit, but a nice play by the left fielder to get it back in quickly to the second baseman and tagged out. On the run is Kelsey Sorensen. Pitch way outside, it'll go 2-1 now, the count to Madrigal. Allie Rook has played the uh, pitch the whole game, done a nice job thus far, has three strikeouts on the day. And uh, looking to add to that total, 2-1 the count here. Ooh, check swing, foul ball. A little bit high, tried to check the swing, did Lindsey Madrigal, but it's gonna go foul out of out the right-hand side. That'll be strike two now, two and two, the count with one away here again in the top, excuse me, the bottom of the third inning. The count four and oh for the Union Cougars. Whoa, hit high into the middle of the field. Shortstop's calling for it and will take it. Shortstop there, F6 is the play for Madrigal and she'll go down F6 for the second out. Again, the Mesa Nilsson, the second shortstop, took control of that early, wanted it, took it, called it, and stayed with it, made the play. So F6 is the scoring on that one for Lindsey Madrigal. Bringing to the plate, Dakota Crusar, and first time up. She got a double the first time up, and uh, she stands in there again. Number three batter, Caitlin Cripps on deck. Takes a wild swing, a shot, but it's going to go foul across the fence down the right field line. She got a heck of a swing. She gets around on that thing. So strike one to Crusar. <coughs> Rook with the ball, brings it. Bit of a change up comes high, ball one. I believe the umpire threw up the uh, illegal pitch sign, but it was high anyway, so it's ball. Don't know what he saw that was illegal in it. Hit right back up the middle. Pitcher knocks it down and picks it up and throws it over to first base. Hard hit up the middle by Dakota Crusar. Unfortunately, 
Uh, the pitcher, Rook, was able to get a hand on it, knock it down, pick it up, and toss it to first for the out. So that'll be it. Three up, three down here in the We're second, the third inning. Inning, the inning. And we'll be back in a minute as we start the fourth inning here in Spanish Fork. I'm Reed Skinner. I'm an OBGYN, recently transferred here to Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. I'm excited to bring to Nephi the experience and the training that I've had in helping to take care of women through all stages of life, from low risk to high risk pregnancies or infertility, family planning, uh, all the way to postmenopause and the management of that time frame. I also specialize in minimally invasive surgery. I'm excited to be here in Nephi and partnering with Central Valley Medical Center, providing the best possible care we can for women through all stages of life. Nephi Federal Credit Union in Nephi offers convenient service and a variety of financial services. They're your hometown credit union that's been serving local residents for over 63 years, longer than any other financial institution in Nephi. The staff invites you to check out their incredible rates on a variety of loans and savings accounts. Nephi Federal Credit Union, 155 North Main in Nephi. Call 623-1895. That's 623-1895. Nephi Federal Credit Union, proud supporter of the WASPs this season. Welcome back once again to Spanish Fork. We are ready to start now the fourth inning here. And again, the fourth inning, the score currently is the Union Cougars with a four-run lead, four to nothing over the Carbon Dinos at this point in time. And it's been a well-played game. There's going to have been a couple of errors, but uh, well-played by both teams. And right now, uh, it's been some great defense. And again, I, the play of the game has to go to the shortstop of the Carbon Dinos, Mason Nielsen. Uh, two diving catches, one knocking a, 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 a grounder down, to, but but limited a, a, what would have been a double to a single. And then the diving catch in the last inning saved a run as she was able to lay out and stop the ball. Otherwise would have resulted in a run for the Union Cougars. Still pitching in there. The, that's a called strike on that outside corner. Again, Cripps still pitching for the Carbon Dinos. And at the plate now, we go back to the top of the order, Marley Horrocks. And she's two for two on the day and scored two runs thus far. So that was going to be in the dirt. That'll be a called ball. So 101 the count. And uh, stands back in, Marley Horrocks. Two for two on the day, two runs scored. Done her job as the leadoff hitter. That's high ball two. Two and one now the count to the batter Horrocks. Pitch to the plate. Oh, wow, hit straight up the middle. The pitcher for, I had to say out because that hurt, but that was hit directly up the middle. Caitlin Cripps was able to throw a glove up and catch that thing as it's coming back hard. She didn't have any time do anything but just simply react to that ball, and she did a nice job of it. Uh, so so she'll get the out there. <laughs> my, my hand and my heart still ringing after that one, the way it came back right at her when she was able to make that play. From the first pitch to the batter, Delcy Lamb, and she slaps it, but it's going to go to the shortstop once again. And uh, the shortstop, Pendergrass, makes that play. And a little line shot to her. So that's an F6 for two outs. And uh, thus far, it, it, if they keep this trend, it'll be the first inning that, that they've not, Union has not had a runner on base. Next pitch, first pitch swinging, so short second baseman lines up underneath it. And that's an economy of pitches as she throws about five pitches in the inning, does Cripps and gets the three quick outs as that's an F to the, F to the second baseman for the third out and for the first time in the game, well, Union goes three up, three no down. No hit, so we'll be no back with the bottom of the set, fourth base. inning here in just a moment. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasps the best of luck this season. Our team works hard to shape the quality of life wherever we live and work. These values allow our team to be the go-to source for rural entities. For integrity, honesty, and technical expertise, think of Jones and DeMille Engineering. 
with offices in Richfield, Roosevelt, Price, and Manti. Visit jonesanddemille.com or find them on Facebook. Since 1982, Jones and DeMille Engineering, your infrastructure professionals. Let me make a correction here. I was unaware of it that made a switch. Carbon has, in the last two innings, has been Brooke Mosman has been pitching. And uh, Cripps has gone to catcher now for the Union Cougars. So I apologize to the folks from Carbon for that error. Again, Cripps has moved to catcher, and Mosman has been pitching the last two innings for the Carbon Dinos and done a nice job as they've yet to score against Mosman in the ball game. In the bottom of the fourth, uh, they start the inning with Caitlin Cripps batting, and it's a one-on-one -on -one count on her now uh, as she steps into bat. She reached in the first inning on a base on balls, and this is only the second attempt, second at bat for her in this ball game as they haven't used many run batters. Uh, the Carbon Dinos have not as a Union has been able to play good defense and keep them off the base pads, and they haven't used a lot of batters. So Cripps now is swinging strike. One ball, two strikes now for Cripps. Again, she's facing Allie Rooks. I don't believe they've made a change there, so I think I'm okay there. Two and two the count now as that ball is low and outside uh, to Cripps. She'll step back in now, two and two the count. Pitch, Pendergrass. And Rook still pitching. Allie Rook done a fine job, has three strikeouts in the game. Another foul ball off the right-hand side, out of play. And the count will remain 0-2. The winner of this game will be the battle of the two undefeateds. The loser will have to drop back into the... Uh, drop down division and have a chance to play back through both fine both fine softball teams. And uh, if at all possible, you want to stay in that winner's flight. You don't want to drop into that drop down where you have to play a lot of ball games. Ball one to Pendergrass, one and two now the count. Again, one away. Ooh. And it says it's a little high on that outside corner. They've been generous out there, but that one must have been a little bit of high ball call. Two and two now the count. That's one that makes a coach kind of hold your breath when they've been making that call out there, a called strike, and the coach is kind of getting nervous when you let one like that go by. Called ball this time. Two and two. Another foul ball over the right side as Pendergrass continues to battle in there. Foul three of them off now hard on the right-hand side. Two and two remains the count, one down. Nobody on for Carbon here in the bottom of the fourth. Rook with it, brings it inside. Oof. Ball three inside. A little tight in there, so the count will go full now to Pendergrass, who's had a, a good at-bat, fighting off pitches, staying alive in there. Trying to get something in play and get herself on base somehow. Rooks to the plate. Going to be fouled again out of play back over the screen. Another foul ball. That's four in this at bat for Pendergrass. Back over the screen. She'll step back in once again. Full count. Rook with it. Hit hard down the line, but it's going to go foul out of play once again. And she continues to battle in there. That's five. And I'm not sure all the, the softballs are coming back the way they're supposed to. Umpire is going to run out of them here in a minute. Everything ready to go. Pendergrass will step back in one more time against Rook. Look for some kind of a change up or something here to set her on her ear. It's going to be down and in. Ball four. And Pendergrass with a great at bat. Does not get the hit, but she works it, works it, works it until she can get the base on balls and gets her on there. And right now, that's what Carbon needs is some kind of a base runner to get yeah, something moving here. And Callie Fawcett will come up. She's the third baseman wearing number nine. She'll come up to plate. She reached last, uh, well, excuse me, in the second inning, she reached on an error. And ball hit hard to the outfield, right field. An error out there allowed her to get two bags out of it. Eventually got to third, but could not score in that inning, but she uh, did hit the ball hard down the right field. See what she can do this time with a runner on first. 
And one away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One away. Swing and a miss. Nice. She took something off that time. Rook did. Took something off of that pitch. And uh, Fawcett flailed at that thing. Heck of a swing. But she was way out of sorts with the timing on that one. Clarissa Noyes will be on deck. Depending on what Fawcett does here. Hard hit into left center field. That's going to get all the way to the fence. It'll allow Pendergrass to get around to second. Third, excuse me. And they're going to hold her up there. Did not take a chance. That's a great double there by Callie Fawcett. And that'll push Pendergrass all the way to third. I thought they might send her, but they held her up at third as the left fielder for, for Union was able to get that ball back in quickly. Brindy Bartlett, it did go to the fence, but she got it back in quick. And uh, that puts runners at second and third now, one away, as Carbon really has something going here in the bottom of the fourth now. Again, trending 4-0, but they've got something cooking here. One away in the inning, and uh, Union needs to come up with some kind of a play here to preserve the lead. Swing and a miss. Again, nice pitch by Rook. Swing and a miss to Clarissa Noyes for the Carbon Dinos. Moosman will be on deck. The current pitcher for the Carbon Dinos will be on deck. And Nelson, Kennedy Nelson in the hole. Called strike. It's an 0-2 count now to the batter Noyes. First time up, Clarissa Noyes. Uh, Hit the ball, it, it was a bunt, catcher picked it up, threw it to first, throw her out. Oh, outside corner, swing and a miss. Great pitch by Rook there. She threw that one just off the outside corner, just enough to get Clarissa Noyes to throw. That's her fourth strike out in the game, second out of the inning, taking a little bit of pressure off. Mosman comes up, she struck out in the second inning, her only at time at bat. Mosman, number 11, the current pitcher, We'll see what she can do. Runners at second, third now, threatening. Hit down the right field line. If it stays fair, it'll get two runs. They're going to say it is fair. The throw is going to go to second base to hold the runner up, but that scores two runs by Brooke Mosman. Great hit down the line, and it does score the two runs as they're running on the hit because it's two away, and that'll bring them both around to score. Pendergrass and Fawcett in to score, and uh, Brooke Mosman will go to first base. They'll send a runner in for her as she is the current pitcher. They allow courtesy runs for pitcher and catcher. And so they'll put a runner in for her. But now Carbon on the board as they were able to score the two runs there. Brooke Moseman with the hit, two RBIs. And Kennedy Nelson will come to the plate. So Mosman did her job. She's done it both defensively and offensively as she's pitched the last two innings, shut out innings uh, for the Carbon Dinos. They've shut uh, Union out the last two innings while she's been pitching, and now she had, comes up and, and laces one into right field and gets two runs across. First pitch is a strike called strike to Kennedy Nelson. Kennedy Nelson uh, hit the ball down first baseline, and the first baseman was able to pick it up and tag her out in the second inning for the third out of that inning. Uh, so this is her second attempt, second time at bat. Hits the ball back, foul ball, strike one. If she gets on, then that would bring us back to the top of the order, and Kelsey Sorensen, the leadoff batter, would come to the plate. Pitch to the plate, it's gonna be a little bit high, ball call. That'll be a one and one, two and one count now to the batter, Nelson. Takes a little bit off. Is it gonna be up the middle to the left field, center fielder? This runner's gonna go to third. The throw is there in plenty of time. Oh, they're going to say it's underneath the tag. The ball was there in plenty of time, but she slides under the tag. That's a great slide by the runner, Mosman, as she goes all the way around and is able to get away with possibility of a running error there, but she's able to get all the way around and goes under the tag uh, for and safe at third and on the play. Kennedy Nelson gets all the way to second base on that. So she gets a single, and the fielder's choice gets her to second base. And so once again, 
runners in scoring position. And Kennedy Nelson and Brooke Moseman. And at the plate, Kelsey Sorensen, the first pitch, she fouls it down the left field line out of play. And it'll bring her to the plate now. She did have a, she struck out in the first inning, got a single in the third inning. And then trying to stretch the single into a double, got thrown out at second base. Ball's going to be hit into left field. It's a blooper into left field. It's going to get down. And they're going to say foul, foul ball is the call. Umpire's got it here at home plate. Nice diving attempt to try and catch that ball. Mason Nielsen, and it was just foul. Just foul ball there. Almost a fantastic hit. That would have scored two more runs the way it was going. And so, uh, but coming back is Kelsey Sorensen with an 0-2 count now, I believe. But it's still a chance to make something happen batting from that left-hand side. Pitch coming way outside. Ball. One and two the count now. Carbon having a big inning here and looking to put a couple more runs or one at least not back on the board with any kind of safe play at first base can score a run here in the bottom of the fourth. It'll be hit high in the air, but it's going to be out of play on the left-hand side. It'll clear the fence out of play on that side. The advantage that the runners have right now as soon as she swings the bat is they're all taken off because there are two outs, and so the, the, that's the runner's advantage. Now they don't have to wait to see if a ball is caught or fielded. They just take off and head for home. Uh, the only thing they want to be sure of is they don't run into a play, make them take the harder play across the diamond. So she'll come back up. Pitch is high, dropped by the catcher, but not far enough away that anything good will happen. They can't, uh, they can't advance from third base to home, so two and two now the count. Sorens Kelsey Sorensen, two and two the count. Big at bat for her. Hit right back up the middle. It's going to go all the way in the left field. The runner's coming around third. The throw's coming home. They will hold the runner. Great throw by the center fielder to home. They get one across, but they hold the under, uh, other runner, Nelson, at third base. So Moosman is able to come around and come from third home and score on the single by Kelsey Sorensen. Great piece of hitting by Sorensen. And again, they do hold the runner, and the throw from the center fielder, uh, Horrocks, was perfect to the plate. And had that runner taken off and tried to score, that probability would have been that ball was there in time, and it was on the plate. That would have been an out. So that's a wise decision by the coach to hold that up. Still with some threat here now. The runner's at first and third now. And uh, first and third with two away and coming to the plate to bat is Lindsay Madrigal and Madrigal has been up twice has not been able to get on base yet flew out to the shortstop and hit it to third base and was thrown out at first swing down the third baseline great play by the third baseman what a play on that ball on the third baseman as she had to go hard to her left turned herself completely around to her right Callie Fawcett makes a great play and then a great throw back across the diamond to Dakota Crusar for the third out of the inning. What, excuse me, I got the wrong team. The, the play was made by Tori Ross across to Madison Hadlock. In spite of that, three runs scored by the Dinos to get back in the ball game. We'll be back with the fifth inning in just a moment. I'm Dr. Chris Karish, orthopedic surgeon with a subspecialty in sports medicine. Central Valley Medical Center has state-of-the-art operating rooms and the latest orthopedic equipment to provide me with the tools to perform safe and minimally invasive procedures. I've had the opportunity to treat athletes from my own sons to the NFL. I provide a wide variety of treatments to get you back on your feet and enjoying your life. Come see us here at Central Valley Medical Center where we can treat you as a friend and not a medical record number. The Intermountain Power Service Corporation is proud to bring you this presentation. IPSC is a community-minded company that contributes to our local schools, community organizations, and economy. The Intermountain Power Project consistently ranks among the best of America's coal-based power plants in reliability, cost-effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. Intermountain Power Service Corporation strives for perfection and is honored to be actively involved with Delta Millard and Juab High Schools. Welcome back once again. We are here ready for the start at the top of the fifth inning. And uh, back into his car Carbon Dinos are back into it. It's a ball game now, 4-3 now in the top of the fifth inning. And uh, 
And again, the, the mistake that I made, not, not picking up the, uh, the defensive change here for the Carbon Dinos, but since Moosman has been pitching, uh, Union has not been able to score a run. They've, they've got a couple of hits, two hits on her, but have not been able to score anybody yet against uh, Mooseman. So we'll see what she can do here in the top of the fifth as Madison Hadlock comes to the plate. First pitch is high and outside, ball one. Hadlock will be followed by Bostic and then Hyder in this inning. Hadlock did have a get reach uh, in the first inning, but has not faced this pitcher thus far, and it's 0-2 count to her now. So both Hadlock and Bostic, excuse me, the first Bostic did get a double off of her, and then the bat in the third inning. Another pitch outside, ball three outside, so it's 3-0 and now the count uh, to Madison Hadlock. And uh, see what Moosman brings up on this fourth pitch now. Right down the middle, swinging, even on a 3-0 and count, she gets to swing away, does Hadlock, because she is the number four hitter. Sometimes you do turn them loose. Uh, swing, foul ball out of play. Off the right side, it'll be a 3-1 and count now to Hadlock. Inside, tries to get out of the play. It's ball four either way. It did hit her, but it's ball four either way. So Hadlock will go down to first base with a base on balls and uh, be the only really the third base yeah, runner that, 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 that Hadlock's had to worry about. Excuse me, not Hadlock, but, but Moosman's had to worry about since she started pitching. But that'll put her on with nobody out and bring to the plate Mallory Bostic, who the first time she faced her, she got a double. This is hit up and over the uh, right side, the right, right, excuse me, second baseman ranges over. Kelsey Sorensen's had to come that way and make a lot of plays back in there, but she makes another one here as she's able to take the fly away for the first out. And on the play, Madison Hadlock not able to advance. So that'll bring Chloe Heider to the plate now. She's reached on a base on balls in the first inning. And then as she faced uh, this particular pitcher, first time at bat, she got a base, she, she struck out, excuse me, got a strikeout. First pitch to her is well outside, ball one. And Heider again, the left-handed batter, and uh, stands back, uses a slap technique. We'll stand, step forward. That's gonna be on that inside corner, called strike one. One on one now the count. One on one to count. So step back in, way outside. Ball fakes the throw down to first of the catcher, Cripps. And that'll be a two and one count now, I believe. Step back in there, will Hyder. Slap down the first baseline, picked up by the first baseman. She'll get the play unassisted at first base. So Crusar makes the play at first. That'll go three unassisted if you're scoring for the second out of the inning. It does advance, however, Madison Hadlock to second base, theoretically in scoring position, depending on the way the ball is hit. And it brings Abby Earl to the plate. Abby Earl, the first time up, flew out to the shortstop off this pitcher. And the first time she in the game, she flew out to the first the, to the pitcher. So she's flown out twice uh, in the infield. This time she gets it over that third baseman's head, though. And they're going to hold her up as the quickly the, the left fielder is able to pick it up quickly and get it back in. So a nice job by Abby Earl, her first hit of the game. And that'll advance again. Hadlock to third in the scoring position. And it'll bring up Brindy Bartlett, who singled last time up off of Mooseman. So she got a single. A single here would score a run. A big at bat here for Brindy Bartlett. First pitch is in the dirt low, and the runner does not advance to second base. Probably should have, but did not advance. Good job by the catcher, Cripps, to keep it in front of her and to keep the threat of a run down. On deck will be Tori Ross for Union. That ball's way outside. Oh, I can't believe you called that one. I'm just sorry about that. But at that point in time, the catcher moved, the umpire moved. It was perfect vision from here. That was way outside. Called strike to Bartlett. He's gonna be hit right back up the middle, and so Carbon's gonna get out of this inning. The threat's gonna go for not as Bartlett hits it directly back to the pitcher, and it'll go 1-3 on the scoring. 
for the third out. So that'll be the end of the top of the fifth inning. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth with Union ahead 4-3. We'll be right back. Azomite Mineral Products in Nephi is using a unique deposit to create fertilizers and as a feed ingredient for customers all over the world. Their feed grit product used as a feed ingredient for livestock is gaining popularity because research has indicated its potential to improve overall animal health. Azomite can be found at your IFA country store, Steve Regan stores, or on their website at azomite.com. For more information, visit them on Facebook, Twitter, or the web. Azomite is excited to be part of the Nephi community and supports Juab High School Athletics. The Beaver Medical Clinic has built a reputation of providing compassionate health care for residents of Beaver and Iron Counties. You'll appreciate the professional services of Drs. B. Noel Robinson, Roger Smith, Wade Oakton, Lance Smith, physician's assistants Reagan Fales, Travis Hicks, and Kenneth Hussey, and nurse practitioners Robin Horton, Lindsay Cheney, Rebecca Rasmussen, and Wade Hollingshead. The Beaver Medical Clinic offers affordable health care and convenient payment options with offices in Beaver, Milford, and Parowan. Welcome back once again to Spanish Fork. We start now the bottom of the fourth inning. They'll come to bat with the number three hitter, Dakota Crusar, uh, the first baseman. Bet you're going to be on that outside corner. I, uh, you know, I guess I can complain all I want, but as long as they're consistent with that call, and he has been consistent, it's a long ways out there for, in my mind, but he's been consistent with it, and you, you can't complain if they're consistent. So I'll stop. Second pitch is a swinging strike, again, on that outside corner. This time gets a piece of it, fouls it back. It'll be 0-2 the count now to Crusar. Still pitching Ali Rook for the Union Cougars. Has thrown the whole game thus far. Thrown a nice game. She does have four strikeouts in the game. Looking for another one here. Hit dribbled to second base, picked up there, thrown to first base, so a nice play from Delcy Lamb across to Madison Hadlock. Well done for the first out. First out brings That'll bring Captain Caitlin Hunter Cripps to the, to the plate Cripps. now. Caitlin Cripps followed by McKenna Pendergrass. And this is where last inning where all the excitement began. Uh, Caitlin Cripps did uh, fly out to the second baseman. But from that, from that point on, things got cooking there for the Carbon Dinos. And they were able to throw four, three runs on the board last inning. Cripps hits it hard into right field. That's going to get down. The right fielder unable to pick it up. It'll go all the way to the fence. Cripps on the way to second base. Throw comes in. It'll be cut off by the second baseman there. And so with a stand-up double is Caitlin Cripps. Nice job as she hits it to the fence in right field. And that'll be a double for her. And that'll bring to the plate McKenna Pendergrass, who took a base on balls last inning, but got things rolling. And McKenna Pendergrass will come up with a chance to score the runner from third, the tying runner now at second base. And Pendergrass has not got a hit thus far. She has struck out and got on on a walk. But uh, in the number five slot, slot, you'd think a pretty good hitter here. Be careful with this one. Turns the bunt, puts the bunt down right back to the pitcher. Pitcher will go to first base. Nice play at first, throw across the diamond to third. Not in time. So Pendergrass puts the bunt down, puts a sacrifice for the second out, but it does move Cripps to third base where anything can happen the at third base. Third and it'll bring, bring Callie Fawcett to the Callie plate. Fawcett. And Callie Fawcett with a chance here to make something really happen here. And she's uh, been on twice and scored once. Gonna turn her shoulders, but they're gonna call that inside corner, strike, call strike one. And again, the Union trying to hang on to that one run lead and dig out of a bit of a problem here with that uh, Double by Caitlin Cripps now at third base on the sacrifice. And uh, Union trying to hang on to that one run lead. Rooks brings it's going to be a little bit high. Ball one, one and one. The count two out here in the inning. And uh, again, these two teams are uh, undefeated, trying to get into that, that the, the, the game with the last two undefeateds. Uh, that's huge. There's so much less softball you have to play if you can win this game. Swinging strike. To Fawcett, strike two, one ball, two strikes now to Fawcett. Beautiful pitch, took a little bit of off that thing and completely fooled the, bat, the, the batter there. Oh, and one and two the count. Rook will bring it. Swing and strike, call strike three. Swinging third strike and the fifth strikeout now for the pitcher Rook here in this ball game. And Fawcett will go down, a strikeout 
First time they've gotten her out, so nothing, no damage from the double by Cripps, and we'll go to the, be back with the top of the sixth here in just a moment. You ever look up at the stars and wonder, how do they pack all that taste into these charbroiled sliders that start for just a buck? Magic. Charbroiled sliders starting at just a buck, only at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. If you got five bucks, you could get like 9.96 inches of sandwich. Or you can get a real meal with a Charbroiled Double Cheeseburger, dog, fries, and a cookie. The $5 All-Star Meals, only at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Coming to the Juab County Fairgrounds this August is country group Restless Heart in Concert. Get tickets now at JuabCountyFair.com. Get advanced tickets now for Restless Heart in Concert at the Juab County Fairgrounds at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, August 9th. Floor seating is just $30. Bucks. Reserve seating, $20. Get your tickets now at JuabCountyFair.com. Don't miss Restless Heart in Concert, August 9th in Nephi, Utah. Get tickets at JuabCountyFair.com. Welcome back once again. Uh, of note, some interest in the other semifinal game, so to speak. Uh, you've got the other two undefeateds in the game going on concurrently. Uh, we're currently, Grantsville is ahead 2 to nothing in the sixth inning. 2 to nothing in the sixth inning, Grantsville right now in the other game of undefeateds. Here we got another tight one here, as we mentioned before. It's four to three. Uh, Union was able to get the four runs in the first two innings. Uh, Grantsville, excuse me, Carbon has made a pitching change in that third inning. And since then, uh, Union has been unable to score a run since that pitching change. And they have had three hits in the process, but unable to get anybody across uh, the plate. And that's a great job of pitching there by the young uh, pitcher Mooseman for Carbon. Coming to the plate to start this bottom top of the fifth inning will be Tory Ross, the third baseman. Tory Ross with a fantastic play uh, on a ball down the line, uh, able to stop some runs last inning, excuse me, the inning before. She will turn to bat, bunt, and the ball goes, she's batting left, she turns to bunt, and the ball goes so far into the left hand, it goes beyond her. Now they're gonna ask, did she offer it the ball? No, she's trying to get out of the way. It actually went clear outside of her it was so far inside it was outside so ball one and she'll be back in there looking to slap she's going to get it over the head of the second baseman nice slap hit over the head of the second baseman nice job by Tori Ross that's her first hit of the ball game and that gets her to first base and a leadoff runner on and Marley Horrocks comes to the plate now she is the leadoff so she comes up she's been up three times been on twice with singles and has flown out to the pitcher one time. So Rx has been doing well, scored two of the four runs that belong to Union. Moosman brings it, foul back hard by Horrox. 0-1 the count to Horrox. On the other two fields right now, there's some two-way games going on. Again, the undefeateds, you've got uh, Beaver versus Duchesne and Parowan and Enter Enterprise on the other field and the two-way ranks. Pitch going to be on that inside corner called strike. 0-2 two, oh the count now, 0-2 oh the count to the leadoff hitter Marley Horrocks. Again, Mooseman doing a fine job pitching. That's only the fourth hit off of Mooseman in the three innings that she's been in here. Brings it on that outside corner and high. Throw down to first base, not in time. So it'll be a ball, one and two now, the count to uh, Horrocks. And she steps back in, here comes Moosman with the pitch. Oh boy, fooled her completely with the ball down and in. She made a desperate swing to try and make some kind of contact and stay alive, but great pitch by Moosman there, down and in with a little bit of movement on it, that's a K. And that'll be the first strikeout, I believe, for her in the well, game. The matter, the base, Excuse me, that is the second strikeout for Mooseman in the game as she strikes out Horrocks, bringing Delcy Lamb to the plate. And Delcy Lamb also uses that slap technique while well outside. Interesting to see all the movement of the players out there as she defensively. On deck will be Mason Nielsen. Delcy Lamb slaps it down. And it's not going to go anywhere but foul, so she'll come back with another attempt. One on one, the count. 
And again, one away. We still have the runner at first in the, in the form of Tori Ross. Uh, thus far, they haven't really attempted to try and steal her. They tried a little bit of a hit and run to get something over there, but we'll see what happens here. One on one the count now to Delcy Lamb. Ball's a little bit low. Again, a quick throw to first base, not in time. The pitch is low, two and one the count. Again, Delcy Lamb has reached on a base on balls and flown out both times in the infield other than that. So has not found the grass yet with this slap technique. This time it'll go just past the first baseman. This one will get to the grass. Runner around second base, headed to third. The throw is there, but not in time. And on the throw, it allows Delcy Lamb to go to second base. So a nice job of hitting. Delcy Lamb will get the single. She'll push the runner around to third base. And on the throw, Delcy Lamb will go to second base on a fielder's choice. So she'll get to second base. That push runners at second and third now, only one away. However, they had the same scenario pretty much uh, inning before and were able to fight out of it. Twice they've had a couple of runners on and been able to fight out of it. Has Carbon yeah, with, with Horrocks, excuse me, with Mooseman pitching. They're having a bit of a confab there on the mound. And uh, umpire has to go out and say, that's enough, ladies. Let's go back to work. And Mason Nielsen now, the number three hitter, comes up. Mason Nielsen, the shortstop. And uh, she has got, was one of three thus far on the day, a single in the second inning. And uh, she'll stand back in there. And Mallory Bostic, Bostic will be the uh, on deck. Ball's going to be hit down the right field line, but I believe it's going to go just foul Ooh, for uh, Carbon. I'm sure they were holding their breath on that one, should it get down, because it was in no man's land. No one was going to catch it. And it could possibly have caused, cost them two runs there, but the, it does go foul, so it's nothing but a loud strike. So we'll bring back up with Mason Nielsen now. God, hits it down third. Nice change of pace there by Mooseman as she took something off of that, and Mesa got way out. Mason Nielsen got way out in front and ends up hitting the foul down the third base line. So it'll be 0 and 2 now. So now uh, Mooseman would be in control pretty much theoretically here. Uh, as, uh, as she has the two strikes, no ball, so she can mess around on the outside edges. Throws one right off that outside edge, and it's going to be knocked down the foul, the, the line foul just out of play. And so Mason Nielsen still alive with a chance to make something else happen here. Here we go now. They got the ball back in. They're going to skid her back in the box. Mason Nielsen again. Madison Hadlock on deck. She's going to dribble one down towards second base. Second baseman bobbles the ball. The run was going to score anyway, but the problem is they did not get the out at first either. The run was going to score because the ball was dribbled down towards second base. So Ross comes in to score. But the bad part for Carbon is that they did not get the hit. They did not get the out at first base. And that will allow also Delcy Lamb to move to third base. So again, the, the run was going to score because of the nature of the hit and the where it was hit. The run was going to score, but you got to get the out on the play and just unable to come up with it there on a slow roller. And so that, that gives the advantage then to Union as they get now two runners on. Again, first and third. Only one away and one run in. Bit of an insurance run there for Union. First pitch to Hadlock is a ball, and uh, she's looking to take step in there. Bostic is on deck. She turns to bunt. Oh, bunts it, but it's going to go foul. And uh, so that will be, well, it's one on one count. And uh, trying to bunt that into towards first base. If they can get it towards first base, bring that runner down the line and see if they can't score again another another run there from third base as she tried to bunt that down first. Stays back this time, swings this time, gets a hard one. They're going to come home with the throw. The throw is going to be in time, but it's going to be the drop ball. The umpire has his hand out for interference anyway as the, the catcher had home base covered without the ball. She would have been safe either way, I believe, there. So they, they elect to come home instead of trying to turn the double play. And uh, the ball, again, was there in time, but it was dropped, and so that will allow Delcy Lamb to score second run of the inning. And uh, going all the way to third base is Mason Nelson, and it puts Hadlock 
at first base on a fielder's choice. And the coach is going to come in to talk to his little catcher here for a minute. And the uh, other fielders are out talking on the, on the mound. And uh, now the umpire will step back in and call him back. Back to the field. Again, runners at first and third. Nelson at third and Hadlock at first with Bostic. Now Mallory Bostic at the plate and Hyder on deck. She's going to hit it to shortstop again. This time they'll go to first base. And they'll get the runner at first base, but the run will score at home. Throw back to second. And they're going to say she did get back in time. That was almost fell asleep there at second base. But they will score Mason Nelson from, from third. And they, again, they elected not to go to second base. They're going to go across the field. That uh, Had, Hadlock will get to second base, and they will go 6-3 to three for the second out of the inning. So, again, they get another run. Now they're going to call the runner at second out. The officials confer a little bit. They're going to get together, and they will call that runner out at second base. And uh, anyway, they do get three runs in the inning. That will run the score to 7-3 to three for the Union Cougars. And we'll go back to the studio and come back with the bottom of the sixth here in just a moment. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. High-speed Wi-Fi, not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Centricom powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your internet today. Call or visit Centricom.com to learn more. Welcome back once again. Uh, again in the other game going on in the 3A division. Uh, you've got now a score of 5-0, Grantsville over Manti. In the 2A, uh, you've got uh, Gunnison beating Beaver by one run, and Beaver all over Parowan uh, late in that ball game. So let's start the bottom of the sixth here as Carbon comes to bat. Clarissa Noyes will start the hitting. Oh, she hits one high and deep. Going back as the left fielder back to the fence. Fielders collide out there. The ball drops down, and uh, it's going to be a dropped ball. Looked like the left fielder had it. Center fielder ran into her, and the ball was jarred loose. It just about popped over the fence after the catch, but it's going to be ruled. Center fielder is going to take some time out here as the coaches are going to run out to see how she's doing. Again, a collision out there uh, between uh, Horrocks, the, the center fielder, and Bartlett, the left fielder. And Horrocks right now is the one that's kind of slow and kind of gingerly getting back up. And uh, the hitter for Gun excuse me, for Carbon was Clarissa Noyes. And again, I, the coach is kind of talking to her right now. That, you know, she kind of looked like she was in a home run trot and uh, only got to second base. Uh, a nice play out there. Getting there, at least, as she hit that ball high and deep, about as far as you could have hit it uh, without putting it out of, the, out of the field. So after have to score that. Uh, and he's seven as she did have that in her glove and then the collision knocked it loose so carbon trying to come right back here after uh, last inning when uh, union put three runs on the board and uh, they put three runs on the board with now two hits and they left two on base so patch up pitch on that outside corner called strike one to Brooke Mosman and Kennedy Nelson on deck and Kelsey Sorensen in the hole here for the Carbon Dinos here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pop up inside in the infield. Coming forward as the pitcher comes across the line. It's going to be a foul ball, but it is dropped as Rook tries to take it, steps across the line, calls off the catcher and the first baseman to try and catch that ball, drops it. But lucky for Union and unlucky for Carbon, it's a foul ball. So, Mooseman will step back in with a one on one count now. The 
or possibly 0 and 2, excuse me. Pitch on the outside corner. He's not going to call it this time. Ball. One ball, two strikes now is the count. One and two the count to Mooseman. Rook brings it inside. Ooh, just off that inside corner. And uh, two and two now goes the count. Two and two. Nobody out here. And again, it was the runner standing at second base. Clarissa Noyes with that, uh, that hit deep into left center field. Pitch comes in foul back against the screen. The, the people in the stands jump out of the way. Looks like uh, in the other game, it looks like Grantsville will advance here as they have the 5-0 lead and man tied down to their last out over there in that game. Pitch on the, oh my goodness, did they get a call there. Pitch on the outside corner is a called strike against for, against Mooseman. That'll be a strikeout, another strikeout for Rook here, and that'll be the first out of the Defender, inning. Number 24, Kennedy yeah, she Nelson. records her, I believe, sixth strikeout here in the game thus far. Kennedy Nelson to the plate now. Kennedy Nelson has got a single last time up. Need another one here. Carbon needs another one here. And that's a called ball on the outside. On deck will be Kelsey Sorensen for Carbon. Currently at the plate, Kennedy Nelson, the number nine hitter. Swing and a miss. It's not called a foul ball, so it goes off the glove of the catcher back to the screen and, and able to advance on that play, Clarissa Noyes. So she ends up at third base. And uh, a called strike on Kennedy Nelson. It'll be one and one Right now, the, uh, that run is not necessarily as important as an out would be here. Just don't want the inning to get any bigger. Inside, ball. And that'll be a ball to two balls and one strike now. Two and one the count. Rook looking for signs. Getting ready to bring the ball. Bring it outside. Three and one the count now, three and one the count. And quickly Union's gonna call a timeout and go out and chat about this uh, to discuss this, what, the, what they don't want to have happen here. You, you got one runner on and, and maybe they score a run, but you don't want to expand it and get other runners on and expand this inning into a big inning. And so I'm sure the coach is trying to settle them down and get their head back where it needs to be. Again, the winner of this game will move on to play. It looks like right now, it looks like they will be moving on to play unless some huge uh, comeback by Manti takes place as they're down 5-0 in the seventh inning and they're down to their last out or so at bat. So the winner of this will advance to play uh, Grantsville, it looks like, and that game will be uh, at 6 p.m. this evening. Well, that's the game it was time it was scheduled for. Pitch is inside, it's gonna be called strike. But I say that's the time it was scheduled for, but I, we're way off schedule now, so it'll be, play, be played later this evening uh, between those two teams. The loser of this game will have to drop down and play also on the backside. So we got a 3-2 count now on the batter, Nelson. Have to stop as a ball comes in from the other field, so they'll get that one out of the play. So 3-2 the count. One away, runner at third, 7-3 the score here in the bottom of the sixth. Oh, and a called strike on the inside corner, and another strikeout, a huge strikeout by the pitcher, Rook. As so she recounts another strikeout in the inning, so she strikes out the number eight batter, the number nine batter. The runner still standing at third base, and Kelsey Sorensen, the leadoff batter, comes to bat. She's had two singles in a row in the third inning, the fourth inning, and now a chance here in the sixth inning Two singles, and then here fourth at bat of the game. Hits down the right field line. It's going to be well out of play. In fact, it'll only reach the other field over there. Down the left field line. Strike one against Sorensen. And she'll stand back in there, batting from the left-hand side. Again, she's a two of three today with a strikeout. 
She'll stand in there looking for the pitch from Root. Popped it up on the left-hand side. Third baseman's got a beat on it. Third baseman will take it. So the big hit to start the ball game, excuse me, to start that inning by noise. She ends up remaining left and stranded at third base as the Union's able to battle out of it. So we'll be back for the seventh inning here in We're just a moment. Welcome back. back. Hurry. Run, the trail is calling. Every turn, hill and fallen log is screaming your name. And you're ready because you have the right type of power and agility to answer the call. Introducing the Honda Pioneer 1000 with best in class 999cc engine and the industry's only six speed fully automatic dual clutch transmission. Check out the Honda Pioneer 1000 at Garrett Honda, 563 North Main in Nephi. Garrett Honda, our family is serving your family for over 50 years. I'm Reed Skinner, I'm an OBGYN, recently transferred here to Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi. I'm excited to bring to Nephi the experience and the training that I've had in helping to take care of women through all stages of life, from low risk to high risk pregnancies or infertility, family planning, uh, all the way to postmenopause and the management of that time frame. I also specialize in minimally invasive surgery. I'm excited to be here in Nephi and partnering with Central Valley Medical Center, providing the best possible care we can for women through all stages of life. Welcome back to Spanish Fork once again. Manti's battling over there in the other ball game. They do have a runner on, and they're going to get the last out. They just had the last out, so Grantsville does advance. Manti will have to drop down. Back to this game here. It's a 7-3, top of the seventh inning. Union coming to bat. Union is ahead. They'll start out with Chloe Heider, then Abby Earl, and then Brindy Bartlett is in, in the hole here as we start the top of the seventh inning. Carbon really needs to shut this down and give no more runs here, so they've got a shot there in the bottom of the seventh. Kind of a slant bunt to the left-hand side is going to go foul by Chloe Heider. That was, that was a hybrid. It wasn't really a slap and it wasn't really a bunt. It was somewhere in between, but it goes foul, and it'll, uh, Chloe Heider will come back to the batter's box uh, and try that again. Heider steps in. This time she'll hit it high in the air. Center fielder was playing shallow, has to retreat a little bit, but plenty of room as the center fielder, Marley, excuse me, center fielder for the Dinos, Clarissa Noyes, goes back and gets that. So it's just a long, a long out there is all that amounts to. So one down here in the top of the seventh. Abby Earl will come to the plate now. Abby Earl, and again, we send out our best wishes to Angie Earl, her mother. Uh, kind of in a difficult situation right now, and we, we wish the best for her. Abby Earl steps in there, and uh, pitch is high and outside, ball one. Abby Earl thus far in, the, in this ball game, in her three at-bats, has a single and uh, two outs. This is a pop fly. It's going to come directly back over the screen. Oh, E19 on a fan right there. Should have had that one on a one-hopper and was unable to pick it up. So we'll call it E19. If that's the official score, we'll go along with that. He says it's an E19. We'll get the gentleman's name later. So one on one the count now. Hit high in the fly, to the right-hand side. The second baseman comes. Oh, and runs into the official and is unable to make the play. So I think we need to call interference on the official there as the second baseman had a beat on it and ran into the official, was unable to make the play. So Abby Earl stays alive. A couple of helps here, an error on a fan and now an error on an official. She, she's still in there. One ball, two strikes is the count, however. One down here in the inning. <laughs> plate come, ball comes to the plate. Outside, ball. Two and two runs the count now, two and two. And again, if you're tuning in for some games that are supposed to be going on right now, we're well behind schedule right here, right now. Whoa, swing and a miss on the outside corner to Earl. She strikes out there. She knew it, too. She flailed at that thing on the outside corner. Nice pitch on that outside. That'll be the second out now, and a strikeout, another strikeout for the young pitcher, Mooseman, who's thrown a nice, a nice job through. since she's been in the ball game here Brindy since the second Bartlett. inning. That'll bring to the plate Brindy Bartlett, who uh, has one hit in three times at bat. Called strike one on that first pitch. Called strike one on the outside corner. Swing and miss. 
Ball down in the dirt a little bit there, but swings at it. Strike two. 0-2 the count now to Brindy Bartlett. 0-2. And once again, way outside. I don't think they'll call that one a strike. Not this time. And she'll step back in again. Carbon has not just got to shut them down here, but they got to come up with four runs here in the bottom. Called ball. The fans are all over the umpire for that one, but that was way out there. Two and two the count, and uh, you make that determination because we're looking right down the barrel at that outside corner here. Swing inside, going to call it a fall foul ball. Swinging strike foul ball. Catcher unable to, to catch it and corral it, so it's going to be get new life here. Uh, Will Bartlett, Tori Ross is on deck. Should Bartlett be able to reach base? Way outside ball. Three and two now as Bartlett has worked their way back into this bat, this at bat, got it back to full count now. After 0-2, so once again, Mooseman brings it to the plate. Fouled, right hand side, out of play. Oh, they're gonna say she made contact with the catcher's mitt here, so she will be awarded first base. An interference by the catcher here, puts Bartlett on first base. And that'll put her on and bring Tori Ross to the plate yeah, now. Tori three, Ross, five, last three, time up, got five. a single and scored a run. And uh, she again bats from that left-hand side, and they'll put uh, Marley Horrocks on deck. Inside, going to call it a strike. Strike one. And once again, Mooseman to the plate. Swing and strike. I believe it's a foul ball. The runner tried to break and go to first, second base. Tori Ross or Bartlett, but it's a foul ball. Strike one, and it'll bring. Excuse me. Strike. Zero oh and two is the count. Strike two is the count. So Tori Ross now down to her last strike. We'll need to kind of cover up, protect, and defend here, and try to put something in play. Hits it to second base. Second baseman picks it up, and tags the runner coming her way. So that'll be it uh, uh, with the. Uh, Bottom of the seventh coming up, and do you end it with a four-run lead? We'll be back in just a moment. Nephi Federal Credit Union and Nephi offers convenient service and a variety of financial services. They're your hometown credit union that's been serving local residents for over 63 years, longer than any other financial institution in Nephi. The staff invites you to check out their incredible rates on a variety of loans and savings accounts. Nephi Federal Credit Union, 155 North Main in Nephi. Call 623-1895. That's 623-1895. Nephi Federal Credit Union, proud supporter of the Wasps this season. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high-quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasps the best of luck this season. Welcome back to Spanish Fork. Once again, we are down to it now. Seventh inning, bottom of the seventh. Carbon trailing by four. It's seven to three here in the bottom of the seventh. And uh, they, they're down against it now. And have to have a big, big inning here to stay in this ball game and get to play on. Lindsey Madrigal, with the uh, catcher, will come to the plate. Excuse me. That's changed up. Uh, Madrigal, not the catcher currently. But she will stand in there. Called strike one on the first pitch. Madrigal has, uh, is 0 for 3 on the day and uh, stands in there trying to get the first hit and get something going here in the bottom of the seventh for the Carbon Dinos. Uh, she'll be followed by Kruchar, the uh, third the number three hitter, and Cripps, the number four hitter. That's going to be high and outside, ball one, 101 to count. But a nice job by Ali Rook. She had the one inning, the fourth inning, where she gave up three runs. Other than that, she has set to Carbon down nicely and gotten out of a couple of jams. Hard hit ball to second base. Line shot fielded there by Kelsey Sorensen. Excuse me. That's the Delcy Lamb with the, uh, the fielding. 
hard hit ball. Can't fault Madrigal there as she hit that thing hard to the right side. That's the first out. That'll bring Kushar to the plate. And Kushar has a double in the first inning since that time. She's been had gone down the other two times. So Kushar steps in there, yeah, followed by Cripps and Pendergrass. Hits a high, deep one. I think this one's gone, folks, and it's out of here. Home run for Kushar. And she gets all of that ball. Home run, Kushar. Great hit by Kushar. Home run, Dakota. Make sure and come on up to the storekeeper's box after the game and get your certificate. She'll get a certificate for a hot dog or something like that afterwards. But that thing was crushed high and deep. Right, left center field clearing that fence. So she does her job as she scores a run, bringing it back to 7-4 now and bringing Cripps to the plate. Caitlin Cripps, the number four hitter. Now that is and she five. has reached base twice Cripps. in three times at bat, once on a walk and once with a double. Last time up, she hit a double off Rook. Swing and strike, strike one. Uh, Pendergrass will be on deck and Fawcett in the hole for Carbon. They still need three more to tie it and keep playing here. Four to win. So they've still got a lot of work to do here. Cripps steps in. She's now currently catching for Dinos. Pitch on that outside corner. They're going to say it's a little bit low. So it's 1-1 one -one with one out. Again, Grantsville has advanced. The winner of this game will play Grantsville. Cripps steps back in. Pitch on the way. High in center field, deep. Center fielder settles under it, though, not enough for the fence. And that's an F6, F7, 8, F8 for the second out of the inning. So they're down to one out, folks. Pendergrass is at the plate, and Carbon has no runners on, and they got to get her done here. And uh, down to one out. Pendergrass at the plate, Fawcett on deck, and Clarissa Noyes in the hole. Union needs one more out to keep their dream alive for the year. Ball way outside, ball one. <laughs> Pendergrass uh, has reached uh, once in three at-bats on a base on balls back in the fourth inning. So she needs to work some magic here, whatever she can do to get herself on base. Union brings it a little bit low, ball. And Rook seems to be throwing those last two pitches. She's throwing those harder than she's thrown anything yet in the ball game, so. Need a little excitement trying to win this game. Maybe be overthrowing the ball just a little bit. Ball two to the batter, Pendergrass. Pendergrass hugs that plate. Pitch coming. Dribbled down the third baseline. Just goes foul. She would have been safe, but the ball just went foul just before it was picked up by the third baseman. And the third baseman, had she been wise, she would have let that roll a little bit farther because Pendergrass was going to beat that one out. It did go foul. Usually coaches will yell at them in a situation like that. Just go ahead and let it roll foul. You can see it's going there. Let it go. So Pendergrass will step back in there. Two and one the count. Get a chance now to make something happen. Swing a strike. Strike two. Two and two the count now to Pendergrass. So Dinos are down to their last strike, so to speak. Pendergrass has to make something happen here. Whatever it takes to get herself on base and bring up the next batter, Fawcett. And as she'll step back in, Rook has thrown the whole game for Union. Done a fine job. Looks in there on that outside corner, way out there, three and two the count. She wasn't going to give her anything to hit there. Going to make it be a hit something that she wanted her to hit, throw that thing way outside. So stepping back in, Pendergrass. Rook, the pitcher, brings it. Hit high in the air, but it's in the infield. Second baseman's calling for it, settles under it, and that's it, folks. Union will advance as they defeat the Carbon Dinos 7-4 to four here that's in the quarterfinal game. Score, Union will move on to play Grantsville at 12, and I can't say 6 o'clock, but there'll be a game in between. Then they'll play Grantsville uh, a little bit later. We'll see what time that is, but stay tuned for that. Again, we appreciate all that have made this possible and uh, the, the sponsors and, and the folks who have made this possible. We, we know that none of these sponsors necessarily from the area of Carbon or from Union, but they do make it special for us. Intermountain Power Service Corporation, National Vinyl Products, Carl's Jr., Centricom Channel 10, Beaver Metal, Metal, Medical Clinic, Nephi Federal Credit Union, Central Valley Medical Center, Azamite, Jones and DeMille Engineering. And again, if you want some good 
Entertainment. Juab County as part of their fair presents Restless Heart. Call Juab County or get online and reserve your tickets now for Restless Heart. Also, uh, 